Louise is a beautiful young girl, working as an assistant to a magician. She falls in love with his charm, and so does he with her beauty. Tragedy strikes when during one of their performances, the magician depicts being invisible and never returns. His disappearance causes Louise to fall into a spiral of depression. For some reason, she believes he will return to her soon, because he has the ability to turn invisible on command. Her depression turns into hallucinations and delusion which eventually lands her in a mental asylum. Nine months after the magician's disappearance, Louise goes into labor. No one knows she is pregnant, so she has to give birth on her own. The baby born that night is invisible. His existence proves that Louise is not delusional. Or maybe it proves she is really delusional. But either way, she is too scared to tell the nurses. She knows her son will turn into a subject of experiments if people find out about his existence. Hence, she keeps him a secret. The nurses come every day to give her food and medicine but never find out about the invisible kid living in the room. Louise calls him Angel, which eventually turns into his name. She takes great care of him and raises him like any normal child. We see her patting his back, feeding him, teaching him to talk and eat. When he grows old enough, she uses chalk in the wall to teach him to read. Angel loves to play with Louise's old dress and shoes, which is the only way he can see half of himself in the mirror. Every night, Louise tells him about her childhood home. She used to live in a cabin in the middle of the woods, owned by her father. On vacation, they used to travel by train and go to a lake. It is Louise's favorite place in the world, and she hopes her son will be able to see it one day. She also wants to teach him to swim in the lake, but the thought of him meeting the outside world scares her to death. On his birthdays, Louise lights up rolled pages and puts them on top of two slices of bread to mimic a cake. Angel doesn't know any better, hence, he never complains. As the years pass, Angel grows up to be a smart 10-year-old, but doesn't come to terms with his invisibility. With growing age, his curiosity grows as well. One evening, he gets on top of a chair and looks outside the window. For the first time in his life, he sees another human his age. A little girl is with her parents outside her home. She trips on the stairs and is helped by her mother. Angel returns to his mother in bed and tells her about the girl. Louise is terrified that her son is growing curious about the outside world. She tells him he is different from the rest of the world, which the normal people don't like. Hence, he has to be careful to never be noticed by anyone. The comet makes a lasting impression on the kid, but his interest in the pretty neighbor doesn't die. He frequently watches her through the window and realizes she always plays the same two keys on the piano. He listens to it for as long as he can, hoping to meet her someday. One morning, Angel asks his mother what it is like to see herself in the mirror. Louise describes the feeling as seeing yourself a little more than you see other people. Louise always believed that her lover would come to her and Angel one day, but after years of waiting, she has fallen deep into depression. She barely talks to Angel nowadays. When she pulls away from him, he feels lonely and spends days drawing on the wall. One day, the pretty girl looks directly at him from the garden in front of her house. Angel feels nervous and runs to tell his mother, who turns away without saying a word. Later, Louise is brought outside her room by the nurses. Angel takes the opportunity to run outside without being noticed. He walks on the grass away from the cold marbled floor for the first time in his life. A few minutes later, he ends up in front of the pretty girl who is playing on a swing. She feels his presence and asks him to come closer. A stunned angel asks if she can see him and finds out she is blind. Her sense of smell and touch is heightened, which is why she can feel his presence nearby. Angel, who has never seen himself before, feels like he exists for the first time. The girl introduces herself as Madeline and touches his hand. They talk for a minute before Angel gets nervous. Madeline makes him promise that he will come again before he runs away. She has no friends because of her disability, so talking to someone her own age is as delightful for her as it is for Angel. He returns to the room with the nurses and lays beside his mother. By now, Louise has stopped smiling altogether. Angel tells her he has a girlfriend, but she shows no reaction. He goes to meet Madeline again as soon as he can. She touches his face and can see him clearly in her imagination. Angel also tells her that he watches her from the window and loves to hear her play the piano. Madeline laughs because she only uses two keys and has never played a melody. The two play hide and seek for hours, even though one of them is invisible, and the other is blind. Soon, the two become inseparable, and Angel starts spending most of his days with her. One day, they take a step forward and kiss. Madeline can perfectly guess what part of her body Angel is looking at because she can feel his gaze. Angel couldn't be happier in life, but that doesn't last long. Madeline reveals that she is about to get eye surgery the next week, after which she will be able to see. She is the most excited about finally getting to see Angel, but he doesn't feel the same way. They spend the next week together before she waves at him from her house and leaves. That night, Louise speaks for the first time in months and invites Angel to sleep by her side. She also asks him to go to the cabin in the woods if something ever happens to her. When Angel wakes up in the morning, she has already passed away. The news is too much for the kid to take. He watches his mother's body for hours before the nurses come and take her away. They also remove all of her belongings and the writing from the wall. The room is the only thing Angel ever knew, apart from Madeline. 
It is gone, and Madeline will hate him when she finds out the truth. So, without anything in his possession, he boards a train and goes to the lake his mother always talked about. He imagines Madeline coming out of the water, which only makes him sadder. Then, he boards another train to the cabin in the woods. He breaks in and looks around before sleeping on the sofa and declaring it his house. Weeks turn into months and months into years. Angel is now a grown man, evident from his raspy and manly voice. He has only talked to himself for years, but still hopes he will get to see Madeline someday. Then, finally, one day, she arrives at the cabin. Angel feels like he is in a dream and cannot stop looking at her. He stands right in front of her, but even with her recovered eyes, Madeline doesn't see him. For the next two days, she goes around the nearest town and asks people about him. It turns out she has been looking for him since she returned from the hospital. Madeline knew about his mother, but the asylum had no records of his existence. Hence, she did more research about Louise and found out about the cabin. That day, she also visits Louise's grave and leaves a letter for Angel. It says that she is back and asks him to come to her. Angel continues following her and stays with her at the house, without her knowing. Madeline frequently feels his eyes on him, like she did years ago, but she dismisses it every single time. Having had enough, Angel writes a letter back to her, saying that he misses her as much as she misses him, but can only meet if she promises to keep her eyes closed. They meet in the woods later that day, and as promised, Madeline keeps her eyes closed. They return home together and lay down by each other's side. Madeline feels his face and takes in his scent, trying to relive the memories they shared. His scent has changed a little, but she can still recognize him. The lovers are overwhelmed by the sudden closeness after years of longing for each other. In the following scene, Madeline is blindfolded and naked with Angel on the bed. Angel asks her how she felt when she first regained her vision. Madeline describes it as a strange experience. Before, she thought the things in the room only existed when she touched them. A bouncy ball would disappear from the face of the earth when she threw it at the wall, and then it would reappear again when it touched her hands. But when she gained her vision, she realized the ball was always there. Similarly, she found out that many things in her room exist simultaneously, not just when she touches them. The profound explanation makes Angel question his existence when he is away from Madeline. For the next week, they live in paradise. Madeline continuously has a cloth over her eyes, but doesn't mind it. They talk about their childhood and their teen years and end up falling in love for the second time. Then, Angel brings her to see the lake, which has become his favorite place over the years. Madeline takes off the blindfold and is mesmerized by the view, but the only thing she really wants to see is her boyfriend's face. Angel kisses her on the neck from behind and promises to reveal himself at night. The night comes, and he is in the bedroom with a sheet over his head. Madeline promises to love him no matter what he looks like, but when she takes the sheet off, she retreats in shock. Angel tells her the truth, which is too much for her to take. She breaks down crying, making Angel feel like the ugliest person in the world. He watches her curl up on the floor, and tears till the morning. When she falls asleep on the ground, he puts a blanket over her. It wakes Madeline up from her sleep. She says she is ready to keep her eyes closed for life, if it means they can be together. But Angel doesn't want that. He doesn't say anything to her face, but registers that she has to be blind to actually love him. Madeline wakes up the next morning and looks for Angel, but doesn't find him. Instead, she finds a note that says he is going away from her life. He promises to always love her, but asks her to stop loving him. Madeline sheds a single tear after reading it. She packs her luggage and is ready to leave when she feels something in her chest. It is almost as if she can tell where Angel is at that moment. After closing her eyes and searching for his scent, she realizes he went to the lake. In the following scene, Madeline reaches the deck and calls for him. She knows he is nearby because of his scent, but Angel refuses to talk. Suddenly, a splash of water is heard. Angel has accidentally fallen into the lake, but he doesn't know how to swim. Madeline jumps behind him, even though she cannot see him. After frantically searching for a while, she sees bubbles underwater and brings him to the shore. Angel gains consciousness after a few rounds of CPR. Madeline declares that this is the end of their misery, and they will remain together forever after this moment. She promises to learn to see him with her eyes open like she used to see him with them closed. In the following montage, we see the couple living a happy life together. They play, fight, talk, and make love, like any normal couple. Sometimes, Madeline puts makeup on Angel, and they laugh at the absurd result. Eventually, she gets pregnant and gives birth to a visible baby. The couple starts their own magic show, which becomes a hit. In the last scene, we see them swimming together.